This video will be to demonstrate uh, the Sansui G8000. It was recently serviced for Kevin, and this will be for his reference to see how it's performing. Uh, this is quite an amazing receiver. You don't see too many of them. They're extremely rare, beautiful, powerful, heavy, all the good stuff. So I have uh, the yellow and red channel hooked up to the left and right channel of the amplifier, respectively and it's going into the auxiliary input. Right now it has a one kilohertz signal going into the preamp at one volt peak, uh, which should be about line level. So uh, we'll just bring this up to the first volume notch and maybe to the second, and there we can see the signal there. So it's a little bit uneven from left to right. We have 32 millivolts average on the red, 35 millivolts average on the yellow. A uh, slight difference, it looks like it's not perfectly biased, not a uh, perfect DC offset. Uh, the wave seems to be a little bit offset and not perfectly centered, uh, so that can be adjusted, although it's so powerful it won't probably affect the performance too much, but eventually it'll probably clip on the top or bottom uh, before the other side. So. We'll go through the volume spectrum and take a look at the values. So it's a little close now. It's at the next level, 102 millivolts average red, 107 millivolts average yellow. And the next one, uh, red 226, yellow 227, not too bad. I should say that everything here is flat and we're on the speaker A output, so now 517 millivolts red, 497 yellow. Nine sixty eight red, eight ninety two yellow. And one point five one uh, one point five red, one point three four yellow. Two point two seven red, one point nine. Two point two seven red, one point nine yellow. So it's a little bit more significant here. Um, so now we could possibly theorize whether it's uh, happening from the volume control, the amplifier, the preamp. Uh, but we could troubleshoot that further after and see exactly where this discrepancy is coming from. It seems like the gap keeps getting bigger as we increase. Uh, red seems to be slightly higher level, 9.16 red, 7.9 yellow. And now we're coming up to about 10 watts. Okay, let's change the frequency and make sure that this is nice and even throughout. So we'll bring the volume back down. We'll bring the frequency here. Uh, let's bring it to about 200 hertz. And we'll start again. So at the second volume, 42 red, 42 yellow. That's a lot more even. 110 red, 110 yellow. Perfect. 236. Six red, 236 yellow, perfect. And these look a lot more even. 20 millivolt discrepancy at 500 millivolts. 945 versus 878, and now red's starting to lead up again a little bit. 2.1 versus 1.8. 3.2 versus 2.64. Let's go up to about 10 watts. Uh, 10.5 versus 9.25. Note that the power meters, however, are fairly equal. 
They seem to be displaying the values fairly well. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll give it a max power test. So let's do this at about a kilohertz. And we're going to crank it up. Hundred and twenty watts, not show oh, there we go. Thirty-eight volts clipping there. And if I bring it down a little bit we can probably see whether it's clipping. So yeah, the red's just starting to clip. The yellow's not clipping. We'll bring it up. The yellow's still not clipping on the bottom. The red is clipping, looks like it's clipping evenly on the top and bottom. So um Bring it back then. And that looks like about the max volume without distortion is at 29 volts into an 8 ohm resistive load. <clears throat> and yellow, let's go as far as we can go. It looks like it's just starting to clip there. Uh, we'll say it maxes out at about 33 volts. Uh, let's check at the bottom. The bottom's just slightly clipping, top's slightly clipping. Okay, so let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer here. It's at 29 volts on the red, 27 volts on the yellow. And the spectrum analyzer is only going to show the red channel. So this is one kilohertz, and we could see the harmonics. Very nice low distortion. I'll crank it into overdrive so we can see exactly how it performs there. That's where it starts to clip. Again, nice, nice significant amount of odd harmonics as opposed to the even ones. And further, it still does the same thing. Not too many even harmonics, which is great. Wow, it really does not seem to get any even harmonics. Um, well, this is at 40 volts average. Wow. That is some stellar performance. Okay, we'll take a look at the other channel. Oops, channel two. And we'll bring it up to about the same levels. And not in overdrive yet. The yellow one had one extra volume notch. There we go. And that's kicked into overdrive. Okay, since we're doing this, let's take a look at a higher frequency, like let's give it 8 kilohertz. And it has about the same characteristics. Take a look at the other channel. And let's just go all the way up to 20. So this is 20 kilohertz here, it's 40, 60. Again, absolutely incredible performance. Right about here, there's a bit of a discrepancy. Of course, these circuits are very heat sensitive and they're going to change exactly what levels they're going to be at depending on how hot they are. So, when we crank it up so far and bring it back down, it's probably going to give us slightly different values as we could see.
I'll just drop down in frequency to see if this discrepancy changes. So now we're at five kilohertz, one kilohertz. Five hundred hertz seems to be consistent, and a hundred hertz. And that's about the same values throughout the spectrum. Okay, another thing to take a look at, I guess, since it's hooked up, let's take a look at the filters here. This is the base filter, so that cranks up the base. It's, it's at a hundred hertz. That's going to cut it. Shouldn't do too much with the mid control since it's low frequency, and we can see that's hardly affecting it, and the treble should barely have any effect, as we can see. As I go up in frequency, this is one kilohertz, so now the mid range filter should be a little bit more significant. You should see this cutting and adding significant amounts of amplitude, and now the bass shouldn't affect it as much since it's not a bassy frequency. Treble. A little bit, it's kind of high, one kilohertz. And let's go up to 20 kilohertz to see how the filters respond. So of course the treble significantly, significantly affects the 20 kilohertz amplitude, the mid-range filter barely does anything. And the bass does nothing at all at this frequency. So our left speaker output should cut it here. Of course, the B should do nothing. Audio muting. Here's our loudness. see how the loudness affects different frequencies. 20 kilohertz, it really boosts it. Let's go to one kilohertz. And you can see the loudness barely touches that frequency. The bass should get a nice boost with the loudness feature. There we go, significant amount of higher amplitude with the bass frequencies. This is 100 hertz. Here's a subsonic filter. It doesn't cut it there. But let's see what happens when we go to a really low well, subsonic frequency, such as 10 hertz, which you won't hear, but it will shake the walls. So the amplitude's at 5.6 on the red with the subsonic filter. Actually, it didn't cut it at all. Oh, sorry, it's just a little slow to respond. It did, in fact, cut it down almost by half to three volts. We have a high filter. We should expect that not to affect this frequency. But as we go up, This is the high filter, a little bit at one kilohertz. This is 20 kilohertz. And that's where the high filter really makes a difference. This is a mode that uh, switches between stereo and mono, and this should help even out the signal when it's on mono. Otherwise, we could assume that it's probably the amplifier that's amplifying the left and right channels somewhat differently. And now that I touch it, I could see that it's could probably use a replacement. It, you can see that it's it's somewhat responding to the touch, which it shouldn't be. It should be on off. It shouldn't have any kind of shouldn't have any kind of in-between. Um, I think that should take care of it. If there's anything else that I missed, I'll come back and do another video.